So what's the proper way to do a short field takeoff in a tailwheel airplane? Hey guys, I'm John from fly8mikealpha.com and over the next five minutes, I'm going to take you through the proper way with lots of great examples here of how to do a short field takeoff in your tailwheel airplane. Now, whether you're flying a tailwheel airplane or a nose wheel airplane, there's a few things that are going to be common to all aircraft for short field takeoffs. Those are full power, the goal to reduce drag, rotate clean, so we're not inducing any drag on the airplane until we're ready to fly, and then of course climb away at VX. Now, it's really fun to watch the pros do this, and we can learn a little bit in watching them do this in their airplanes, how they don't pull in flaps until later in the takeoff roll, how they get the tail up right away to lower the angle of attack to reduce drag, and how they climb away at VX to clear all their obstacles. Now, let's go ahead and take a little closer look at how this really applies to some of the airplanes we might be a little bit more familiar with flying, like this Cessna 170. So let's go ahead and break down the key steps of a short field takeoff. We'll look at each one individually, and let's look at how this applies to more so the real world rather than a competition setting, although the competitions are really fun to watch. Now, obviously, when we're doing a short field takeoff, step one is to apply the brakes, get the airplane stopped, and apply full power. So we have maximum runway in front of us, we're holding the brakes, and we slowly ease in full power. When you're easing in full power, you probably want to have that yoke or stick back, pinning the tail to the ground in case there's enough power from the engine to pull the airplane over onto its nose, because that would obviously be very bad. Now, throttling up to full power serves two purposes here, okay? So first, obviously, we would get maximum power as soon as we release the brakes, so we get maximum acceleration, making the best of our short runway. Now, second of all, when we add full power and we're holding the brakes and we have it in there for, you know, two to three seconds prior to releasing the brakes, we're actually checking all our instruments, making sure they're all in the green, making sure we have good RPM. The engine is, in fact, making full power, so we get the expected acceleration out of the airplane that we need to to get off that runway. We have good oil pressure, good oil temperature. All the gauges are green. Everything's looking good. Then you can go ahead and release the brakes. Now, once you release the brakes, your very next job is to get as little drag as possible on the airplane. So how do we reduce drag? Well, we can't really control the surface we're on or can't really control the air pressure in the tires at this point. So the best way to reduce drag is simply reduce and induce drag. Stop creating drag on the airplane that you're creating. So Let's just go ahead and raise the tail by pushing forward on the yoke or pushing forward on the stick or going to controls neutral, whatever it takes to get that tail up, which lowers the angle of attack on the wing, which lowers induced drag and allows the airplane to accelerate faster. The drag you induce by raising the tail is negligible compared to the drag you get rid of by lowering the angle of attack on that wing until you're ready to rotate and climb away from the ground. Now, you'll even notice some of these guys pulling in flaps when they're ready to rotate to help them pop off the ground. They don't have flaps in to start with because they are reducing the drag to an absolute minimum during the takeoff roll. Now, at the beginner level, I certainly recommend just setting your flaps, whatever you're going to use for takeoff, right from the get-go so you have less things to worry about. You can just keep the airplane going straight down the runway and then rotate when you're ready to. You don't want to be creating a lot of extra tasks for yourself, like going from zero flap to full flap or to half flap or whatever it is like these guys are doing to help pop off the ground. This is a competition, so it's very different from what you're going to do in the real world compared to this example here. Flaps are already set. We add in power. We release the brakes. We get the tail up as soon as we possibly can, and then we make a nice clean rotation. So rotating clean is very important. What I mean by that is we're not rotating late or early. So we can see here, rotating early, we slam the tail into the ground. It kind of hurts. And obviously we're inducing drag with that wing when we're not really quite ready to fly just yet. So if we waited just a little bit longer, we could rotate that tail down, rotate the wing up, get off the ground, and then accelerate in ground effect and climb out at VX. This is a very nice example of that here where we have this nice clean rotation and the tail barely touches the ground or maybe just kisses a little bit. That means you're not too fast and not too slow when you're rotated. So we're going to be rotating probably about five to 10 miles per hour, five to 10 knots prior to VX, and then accelerating in ground effect throughout that rotation and climbing away from ground effect at VX no slower. The airplane will not accelerate as well out of ground effect if you're below VX, so you want to make sure you achieve VX prior to leaving ground effect. Very big important point here. We don't want to leave ground effect slow. There'll be a ton of induced drag on the airplane as we have that high angle of attack mushing through the air. And it'll be very difficult for the airplane to accelerate and clear the obstacles that we were trying to clear on our short field takeoff. 
Now, the last thing I want to remind you guys of is when that tail comes up, when you add in all that power and you finally release those brakes, boy, is it going to take a lot of right rudder to keep this thing going straight because you have all those left turning tendencies working against you, especially gyroscopic precession when you're spinning that big prop, spinning that big gyro on the front of your airplane oh so fast and you raise the tail right away at a very low speed. There's very little airflow over the rudder. So you may be going full right rudder and barely able to keep the airplane straight. If that's the case, there's brake. You could always use a little right brake to keep it going straight, or you may just want to use a little less power to start with until you build up and get used to using full power right from the get-go here. So maintaining directional control is always the most important thing. If we can't keep the airplane going straight down the runway, then taking off short doesn't really matter if we go off the side and hit the trees before we ever get airborne. So although we're trying to push the limits of our airplane here and get maximum performance out of it, we want to make sure we can maintain control of the airplane during this whole procedure, and control is key. If you can't control the airplane, don't even bother with this, just stick to regular takeoffs. And as you get more proficient, you can move into the more advanced maneuvers like these guys are doing here in competition. So there you go, there's your four steps to a short field takeoff in a tailwheel airplane, full power, reduce the drag, make a clean rotation, climb out at VX, that's all there is to it. Don't make it any more complicated than that. Keep the airplane going straight down the runway. If you have any questions on this, go ahead and leave them in the comments on fly8mikealpha.com or in the comments below this video. Be sure to check out the awesome tailwheel pilot course online at fly8mikealpha.com if you're even curious about going into tailwheel airplanes. If you're starting at your training in one, or if you're just thinking about maybe getting your tailwheel endorsement later on down the road, or you're about to go get your tailwheel endorsement, take that course. It will save you a lot of time, money, and frustration. I guarantee it. Be sure to give us a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already to keep up with our latest awesome flight training videos. Share this with your friends on Facebook and support us on Patreon. It really helps keep all our free videos available to you guys here on YouTube. And as always, guys, if you cannot fly every day, then fly 8 mikealphacom Check out the awesome online ground school at fly 8 We will see you all next time.